So hello everyone and welcome to the workshop. Hello everyone and welcome to the workshop. In this video we're going to be doing a review on the Lumberjack BS254 bandsaw. So just before we um, get into looking at the bandsaw, um, I'd just like to point out that this uh, review is not sponsored or supported by Lumberjack, um, Toolsave who um, import the Lumberjack brand and Mano Mano. This is an unbiased view, review from myself who has purchased this machine without, with his own money. So first of all I'm going to point out the things that I don't like about the machine that I believe should be improved on. First of all is the light. Now it is a good light in the respect that it's very bright. And I'll just show you that. If it doesn't get a glare, glare too much. So that's the light and it's a really good light and it does give you a lot of light really nice and close up. The thing I don't like about it is that quite obviously it comes out of the back here. And it's very hard and I believe the light should be right on the front of the, uh, the blade so you can see your line if you've marked a line on your piece of wood or whatever material you're cutting. So it shines on that line and shines on the front of the, your blade. Now you have to get it this close from the back of the machine um, to get that to shine right on the front of the blade, especially if you have the guard down in place. So if you've got a thin piece and you have to manoeuvre this into the right place and sometimes it doesn't stay there. And to be quite honest, it's very awkward. It would be much better if it came from under here can't come out the front or even if it did come out the front it came out above the switch somehow and then you could have it right on the front. This is my own personal opinion um, there may be other ways of doing it and I may be doing it completely different uh, completely wrong and that that is the way to have it through the back but it just seems really awkward to get to having it around the back especially if you've got your fence up close, which you wouldn't obviously have it. Make sure it. If you've got that in there, yeah, you wouldn't be able. You need to follow a line, but it's still nice to have the light right on the front of the blade, which is very difficult to have it on with that light. Right. The second thing that is not very easy on this machine is changing the blade. Um, when I first got the machine I used it for quite a while with the uh, blade, the stock blade that came with the machine. Now that blade is a 10 millimeter blade, 6 TPI um, I've now bought two other blades um, which are better quality blades. Um, I didn't even take the actual blade off when I got it to see how it done it. Until I got the new blades I hadn't even taken that blade off um, so I hadn't realised um, how hard it is to actually take the blade off. I'm going to try and show you with this blade um, how to take it off. Right, so first of all, we need to remove the fence. So 
So we slide that off. And now we need to remove this uh, guide defense holder, whatever it's called. And that needs to come off. Then we need to remove this plastic insert, which I'll come to later. So that frees up this slot so the blade can come through, which is fine, not too bad. It's quite easy to set the, uh, the fence up. So then we need to undo the two doors, like so. Then we need to untension the blade. And this is where it gets a bit tricky, because if you see this slot down here, this doesn't come off. So we have to work out and try. This may be a bit easier with this one, which it is. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is a six millimeter wide blade. Now I'm gonna put back in 12mm. I'll just undo that and there she goes. So we've got our blade and we need to put it in. So we slot it into there, make sure it's clearing. Obviously I've got to adjust the not that one. So what you have to do is adjust the uh, the bearing alignment. just so that they can slot in. So you have to do it. This is the awkward bit as well. Um, if you're going from a different size blade to adjust the bearings down in this, the underneath part, which is the front. you have to slide them out of the way. That way the blade will go in. Sorry if this is being a bit of a pain, but well, this is even worse than when I've tried it before. So this is what keeps happening is, yeah. So we're on, just. Well, I do have to say, that is probably the easiest one that I've put on so far. So it could be a case of practice makes perfect. So actually, yeah, it's a bit fiddly. What I'm going to do is show you down inside the table so you can see where the bearings were. So 
So as you can see, they're the two alignment bearings in there. Let's, let's get some use out of this light and see if that helps. There you go. So the two bearings and these are the two little, whoop. These are the two Allen screws that you have to undo to slide them. So even though I've just put that on and that was probably the easiest I've actually done it apart from uh, the guides, moving the guides. I think if they were in the right place, i.e. we've already had a bigger blade rather than a smaller blade, that would have been really easy. But up until that point, it's still a bit fiddly trying to get the blade in here sometimes and then getting it all into the right place. So that's still a little, um, probably me, needs to uh, have a bit more practice doing it, but it's something you need to watch out for. So we'll go on to the next one now. So, the next issue I have with the machine, and as we've got the doors open, um, it's the, when you change uh, speeds, um, the actual motor um, nut that you have to uh, undo is a bit awkward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maneuver things around so we can see the motor a bit easier. Right, so to change speed, we have to slacken off the motor. Um, as you can see here is where the bolt is securing the mo motor, which needs undoing to allow the motor to move. Now the problem we've got is this is the Allen key that's supplied with the machine to do this. Now, you put the uh, Allen key in the slot. So as you can see, we've got the Allen key in the bolt. Now we haven't got a lot of room because of this flex that comes out, which is the power flex, and this solenoid of the motor. So when you try and undo it, you can only go that far and you have to keep as you can see the flex gets in the way to get a nice movement on it so you have to hold the flex out of the way and then just keep moving a couple of times Right, so that's enough to for it to move now. So you can see how awkward that is by using the standard Allen key. Now I suppose I'll just get one out of my box. If you've got one of these handy with the ball on the end, Allen key, then it does make it a bit easier. But with the tools that are supplied, it is quite hard to get that undone, to change the belt quickly if you need to ch change it quite quickly. So it does do it up a bit quicker with one of these. But you're still plagued with that flex in the way even with that. So that is one of the uh, the problems. It would be nice if this was some kind of uh, knob. So my last issue with this machine 
which is nothing really drastic, is this little table insert. It's plastic, it's very flimsy, as you might be able to see when you... Um, it's okay, it does the job. Um, but it's got a very big gap in between the blade. So if you were to purchase this machine, one of the first things to um, do, especially if you're gonna have really thin pieces, is changing that insert for a zero tolerance insert out of wood, I suppose. Um, I've not had any issues with it at the moment because I've not done that um, thinner pieces of strip of wood, like um, veneers or anything like that. But, um, so I've not had any issues, that's why I've not changed it at the moment, but I'm sure in the future that will be one thing when I get round to it to change. So apart from that, everything else is really tickety-boo. Um, so I'm going to now go on to some of the, the good things that I really like about this machine. 